Sigmund Prime, please, I beg you. I have never been this bored in my life. I'll do anything. There must be somebody you need killing, maiming, punched in the face. Name them. How about him? Sigmund Costa, on your last mission, you came within five seconds of causing a nuclear explosion in the heart of Washington, D.C. Ah, but I didn't, though. I walked the tightrope of disaster, teetered on the edge, but ultimately triumphed. That is the Brinkman way, is it not? Javier, you indirectly caused eight billion dollars worth of property damage and directly brought about the death of Barack Obama's Portuguese water hound. That was me or him, sir. And besides, that dog was an Al-Qaeda suicide bomber. Which is why you still have your job and your memories. Javier, I need you and your team of Brinkman to lie low for a couple of months till this all blows over. Then we'll get round to finding some terrorists for you to torture, eh? <laughs> couple of months? Gentlemen, I am bored. Dangerously so. And that's why you set off the brink signal. You know it costs like a hundred grand every time it's used. Yes, well, my, my phone ran out of credit. This morning I woke up with two beautiful women. And yet still I feel this ennui tugging at me. Tell me, do you not feel it clawing at your very souls? I'm fine. I've got loads of work to catch up on. None of which involves getting shot at, you know, which is nice. I've spent most of my adult life doing nothing. Normally in some desert, in an improvised shelter, staring down the sight of a sniper rifle with my thumb up my ass. The pub is a definite step up. Why do you have a thumb up your ass? Because, after a week of lying in the same position, eating nothing but ration packs and Kendall mint cake, you run out of little bags. Oh, oh, that is, oh, that's disgusting. Oh, you're that's, sick. You're that's sick. Best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something, some plan, some course of action. Four women, and still... <laughs> no, Javier! The answer is not to move up to six women! Okay, I'm willing to admit that today I'm feeling a little... antsy. Right, guys, listen, I've actually got a load of work to do back at the Panopticon, so, um... I'm actually going to have to head, okay? Brinkman Murphy, your team has used its Brink signal twice in two days despite being suspended. Report. It's Brinkman Costa. He's dangerously bored. I'm worried he might do something a bit stupid. How stupid? Atomically stupid. Then your new assignment is to find something to occupy him. All your excuse, is Brinkman Prime, out. I had 50 hours of audio decryption to process. Lovely, boring, peaceful decryption. So, so what is my mission? What do I need doing? I know what you need doing. No, no, John, no, don't. You know what he's or like. Rather, no, stop, John. Or rather, who? Oh, God. Ah, <laughs> so she is why we spend so much time in this stingy room. Sit rep, Brinkman Murphy. Her name's Laura. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Use her full title. The lovely Laura. And she is absolutely, positively the most awesome girl I've ever met. It's like her entire face, her entire body has been precision designed to create that smile. When I see it, I just sort of, it just kind of, Goes into your eyes, travels down your spine, and into your balls, eh? <laughs> yeah. So what is the problem? That's the problem. 
she's in this long term on off relationship with this middle class gangster wannabe. They're off at the minute but you know she just sees the nice guy that he used to be and it'll be back on any minute. So it is a mission of love for the Brinkman. John, surveil this reprobate and report back. Awesome. Jerry, it's time for a crash course in the art of passion. Brinkman, to action! His name is Carl Barton. A low-ranking but ambitious dealer under Mark Arnold. He's no one, really. He's too middle class, doesn't really belong. But his best mate is Mark Arnold's favorite nephew. If we can get rid of the nephew, then we can remove him from any power base he may have. Go. Talk to her. Charm her. Let her smell the danger and excitement that streams from our Brinkman's paws at every moment. And she will melt. I can't do that. I'm not even a real Brinkman. I'm just an IT geek who happens to be good at tactical support. I stay in the van. Last time I got involved in the action, I shot you in the shoulder. No, you shot the terrorist who was about to set off the bioweapon. My shoulder just got in the way. You lost three pints of blood and the medics nearly had to amputate your arm. Ah, but they didn't though. And that is the key to being a Brinkman. It is not enough to just walk the tightrope over the waterfall of disaster. You have to jump, leap, somersault onto the other side. That day when you lined up that shot through my stupid, clumsy torso, you became a Brinkman, my friend. Now, go get her. He's going to bail, isn't he? Yes. Yes, he is. Did you make preparations? <laughs> I kind of glazed over when the science guy explained all the technical crap, but imagine a cocktail of adrenaline, sodium pentothal and rohypnol, and you're on the right track. You know to make the world a great place once we've moved? Excuse me? A date, a date with me tomorrow night. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd like that. The great smashing super. I'll meet you tomorrow night. I've got to go now. I feel a bit ill. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I, I must have misjudged the dosage. Uh, have you lost weight? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> no matter. We walked the tightrope of your dignity. Prevailed! Fuck you! And your fucking tightrope! <laughs> right! To action, Brinkman! We have a date to fix and an axe to scupper! <laughs> I'm gonna need a minute! Oh. Jerry? Jerry? The key to the bastard technique of seduction is to imply that you could be redeemed by the love of a good woman. You must never, under any circumstances, allow her to see you go to Maximum Bastard. Kids! Fucking kids! You said it was just dumb rich students! Babe, it's not what it looks like! Don't fucking patronize We must then follow swiftly with a blow to his professional activities. Yeah, police, please. Yeah, I, I believe there's a drug deal going on outside my flat. Where's my nephew? Where's my nephew? Look, I know things have been bad recently with the busts and everything, but I can get it all back if you could just loan me a couple you of... You do realise that any loan I might make would be to my nephew, and you would just happen to be standing beside him. So where is he? Not arrested. <laughs> Definitely not arrested. He wasn't even there. Then where?
He said something about having to go away and work through some issues. Javier, Javier, where the hell are you? We're reaching zero hour and Jerry is way out of his depth. Hello, John. I am here. I thought it would be too easy to coach our friend from indoors, and so I will be doing it via radio from a different location. Is everything in place? Yeah. Broke into her place this afternoon. And replaced her entire outfit with a replica laced with sensors. My brain phone's been programmed to use these signals to measure a range of physical factors to find the perfect moment of arousal and emotional engagement for Jerry to make his move. Have you, eh? Why were you really there? What have you done? Oh, John, you can read me like a cheap pornographic paperback. This all just seemed a little too easy. Unworthy of a true brinkman. Look, this isn't my fault. Someone's got it in for me. I think they messed with your nephew. I need your help. If you had even the slightest bit of proof. <laughs> Greetings, gentlemen. I just thought I would inform you that I am the person who has been sabotaging your operations and messing with your friends and relatives. This is a personal vendetta against him. But I am more than happy to screw with anybody associated with him. If any of you would like to discuss this like gentlemen, I will be upstairs waiting. Until then, farewell! Take ten men. If you can't fix this, find another city. You're going to give Sir Dubson advice at the same time as fighting off gangsters? That's ridiculous. I know. The time was short and I couldn't find any ninjas. Happy A. Let me through to Jerry. Jerry, did you hear that? The music has changed. Now is the time. Sweep it onto the dance floor. With one hand to your head. One your thumb. Gently across her cheek. Then place your hand in hers. This is it, guys. She's peeking. Take her face gently in your hands. Gaze lovingly into her eyes and engage. How'd our boy do? Mission accomplished, Brinkman. Enjoy it while you can. We have to find something to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>